This is one of those topics that we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, guy, like I have a bunch of friends. We don't sit there and say, you know, yeah, yeah. You ever see any good porn? You know, what's your best porn stations? So, and, and it's not that they're not watching it. It's just, you don't talk about that shit. So having a, having a, a, a group. Yeah is important is that rebuilt recovery yeah so rebuilt recovery um so we have programs we have you know tons of free content free ebooks out there there's a course 16 weeks long to kind of walk you through the steps right so there's going to be a there's going to be an underlying root issue for this there's going to be something that is driving the need to feel intimately connected with a woman on a screen so you know it could be issues from past relationships it could be issues with how you just seek intimacy with other people but we want to get to what the root of that is what are you avoiding in your life and how are you using porn as a coping mechanism for that so we'll walk you through a process of identifying some of those things in your life but then yes it's getting in the community it's having truthful honest conversations on a regular basis it's getting support and then it's mapping out a plan so if i'm here and i'm struggling with a porn addiction and my goal is to get on the other side of this thing and create what we call a porn free life there's going to be a process that you need to work through your day-to-day -day habits what you consume movies you watch music you listen to conversations that you have um, one thing we're big on and we do this in our, our second month of our program is the service of these guys we want them out there helping other people you know when you're consuming porn it's all about me it's all about what frank wants it's all about what brad wants like and you begin to create this ecosystem where everything in your life is about what I want. I had a guy in my program call it like he had a relapse or a slip. And he's like, I felt like I had the, the gimme gimme's like, give me whatever I want. And if I don't get it, I act out like a child, I throw temper tantrums, all things that guys that are struggling with this do. So living in a state of service, thinking about how can I help provide service to other people is a big component of there as well. But yeah, I would say the biggest part of this is truthful and honest conversations about what's going on. Is there any like funding from governments like uh i'm sure there are for other recovery you know houses yeah unfortunately no and and this is a this is a an uphill i don't want to say it's an uphill battle i'm fighting um but i think because we're so early in just the awareness of what's going on i mean when we talk about pornography addiction brad we're talking about the internet streaming pornography you know guys maybe there were guys that were struggling with vhs and, and, and dvds but it's not the level where i can literally pick my phone up and the drug dealers in my pocket with me 24 7. so the fact that the internet in in the bandwidth that we have it today is really less than two decades old when you look at it clinically, it's not really accepted. So the DSM-5, which you know talks about all addictions, pornography addiction is not even in there. So in terms of government funding, no, not at this point. You know, will that change in the future? It's it's something that it would obviously help help our business. It would help us reach a lot more people. Um, but it's it's not it's not preventing us right now from from doing anything. Hmm. Maybe it's because again, nobody kind of thinks of it as, as that. Because, like, you know, drugs, you, you end up in jail, you end up robbing people, you end up, your health goes away. You know, jacking off a lot, I'm not sure that's really going to harm you too much other than mentally. So it's more of a mental problem. Well, it's a mental, it's a mental issue. There's clearly, there's, there's emotional issues that are wrapped up in it. I would say it's a big spiritual uh, battle as well. What's, are you uh, faith-based? I am. Yeah. What's the Bible say about whacking it? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, a, a theologian. I'm pretty sure the Bible is against, um, masturbation. Uh, I it, wonder. It, it deems it as self harm, I think is, 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 is how it's perceived in different books. Um, but I would say where it leads to though, is you have to understand that in time, if you're watching porn multiple times a week, every day, multiple times a day, desensitization will kick in eventually what you watch on the screen will stop working so now you begin to go down a rabbit hole of consuming more hardcore material different types of genres well what happens when that stops working where do i go from here now so we you get know into you're murdering people are you not murdering i mean uh could be who, you who ever a necrophiliac yeah ted, ted bundy talked a lot about how porn played a role in in in, in the warping of his mind and how he used to kind of 
act out some of his fantasies um, and some of his crimes that he he committed. Where I was gonna go though, it's gonna lead to purchasing of sex, right? So if I can't get what I want from a screen and I have the means to do it, I can then go purchase sex. You know, prostitutions, escorts. We've had a lot of guys in our program that have openly talked about that. Well, that I can see how working. I can see how it leads that leads yeah, to that. That stops working. We clear we we clearly know that there is a tie between pornography and human trafficking. So the purchasers of sex slaves are guys that are struggling with porn addiction to some degree. It's somewhere in their journey. I don't believe you get to buying sex as a as a trafficker without having gone through the pornography tunnel. So I do think that is harming other people. Well, you got to be a real. I would say addicted individual to pay for sex slaves. In other words, you got to be really fucked up to pay for that shit. Not, I'm not talking about a hooker. You know, you go pay for a hooker because she's, you know, you, you want to have sex real quick, it, which by the way, I wouldn't recommend that at all anyway, just from the diseases, but sex slaves, especially child trafficking, you know, like, dude, there's some sick son of a bitches out there. You think they became that way from watching porn? I think it played a role in it um, because every single time that I've heard that question or, or had somebody talk about speaking to victims. So I'm connected with a couple of anti-human trafficking organizations in, in Tampa, Florida. We, you know, we give funds on a, on a, on a yearly basis. We try to support, do what we can. We try to speak at their events if, if we're asked to. Um, but I have a lot of guys that, that I know personally that work. So I have a friend that actually runs a buyer rehabilitation program in Tampa, Florida. This guy got connected with a couple months ago. Did you say buyer? Buyer rehabilitation program. So he helps rehabilitate sex buyers. So all of these guys that he's worked with have told him that their pathway started as a young boy with an induction to pornography. It warped their mind. It created issues with their desires, issues with their intimacy. And in time, it leads them to acting out irrationally, just like any addict would, to the purchasing of, of, of sex slaves. Damn. See, when you look at it like that, it's like, dang, that is kind of serious. Yeah. So is zero tolerance your your view like you don't watch porn period for me personally that's how i live my life though yeah well but yeah but if you're an if you if you're an admitted addict that's how you're supposed to in other words you, you can't watch one porn because then next thing you know you'll be back at it just like drinkers alcoholics it i was arguing one with the other day which but when i say argue i say debate debate's a better word yeah if he if he has a drink, it's been let's say twenty years since he drank. If he has one drink, it's over. He'll he'll go nuts. Now again, I'm not gonna dare him and test him, but I just don't believe that shit. Why? Well, because dude, technically you just went twenty years without a fucking drink, so you can go without a drink. You tell me if if you have one, you can't control yourself. He said no, and I and again maybe that's true for some people. I've just never, I can't wrap my arms around that one either. It's yeah, like, dude, that's a, a choice. That's a choice to get drunk. No, I, I, I love that whole approach, man. Cause I, I, I believe watching porn is a choice too. And I think a, not watching it is a, is a big choice we have to make. But I had a doctor on the podcast, talked to Rob Kelly, um, who was uh, an alcoholic and he talks about the alcoholic's brain. So from a genetic kind of DNA perspective, there's, there's a way that an addict's brain processes alcohol that when they do, if they go 10 years without it and they had that first sip, it's almost as back, it almost takes them immediately back to where they were 10 years ago. So I think there were guys like that can say, no, I can't have one because I'm gonna wanna go all the way back to where I was. I do believe that can be true for some people. I think with pornography though, is by the time you get to the point where you're reaching out to me and we're working together, it's had such a negative impact on your life. It's either oh, impacted yeah. your career, it's impacted your relationships, your inability to create relationships, that's created this disgust with it that I don't even want it as a part of my life. I mean, if you talk to, you know, I, I used to smoke cigarettes when I was in my early 20s, like just, you know, got, fell into it through drinking and partying and it just became a regular daily habit. But I was in, I was walking the strip last night, like you walk through a whiff of cigarette smoke. I love cigars, but you walk through a whiff of cigarette smoke, so it's got a different smell to it. It's got that disgust, like, in your gut. So I think for a, 
our guys, at least this has been my experience, is when they reach out to me, they're so disgusted with consuming porn that they're looking for a way to get it completely out of their life. They're not looking for help me get free so that I can then manage a relationship with it. They're like, no, Frank, this has had such a negative impact on who I am and what I'm doing. I want it completely gone. Interesting. 